and sodium. This year I decided to vlog all the processes involved in making my Henry Christmas village. Why? Maybe because I'm just too crazy if I think to all the extra hours I will need to simply edit the footage. But I think it could be helpful to those who are new to this fantastic adventure to precisely know what it takes to get the final result starting from scratch. Certainly online you will find small videos, small tutorials, small making of, mainly plays at the end of uh, uh, Christmas Village videos, such I used to do, but nowhere you will find an entire uh, tutorial, an entire video on how to get the final result. Because if you want to get a decent result, it's just not a matter of laying on top of a flat surface all your buildings and all your figurines. You need to uh, add some depth of view. You need to work on different levels. Is my way, and the only way of doing it, is my way the way of doing it? Absolutely not. It's just the way that fits better my capacity to get a decent final result. But where do I start from? I start from carpenter easels. This year I've used nine of them and I joined them together with some standard zip wire ties in order to get a hyperstatic structure. Then I lean on the easel some plywood planks. I generally use planks of a thickness of 1.5 cm or 0.6 inches if you prefer. I turn together the plywood planks with some mounting brackets and eventually this year I've added some more brackets on the back because I needed to gain around 15 centimeters or 6 inches more of that without having to cut some more plywood planks. The final result is a, is a surface of 180 centimeters by 180 centimeters or 5.9 feet by 5.9 feet or 70.8 inches by 70.8 inches. Uh, some of you may think that uh, this is a heavy structure, that uh, it will be very difficult to work on the back because I will have to work on the back, and especially with all the weight added by the uh, buildings. It's true, but you always need to improve yourself. So this year I have introduced uh, something new. I have introduced the use of some furniture sliders, they come in different shapes and sizes and I place on each leg of the easels these sliders. These make the entire structure movable. I can show you now that even with just one hand I can move it forward and backward without any difficulty. The main structure is ready. We need to really start building our project. The main material I will use throughout the entire project is polystyrene foam or styrofoam if you prefer. It's a very cheap material and you can cut it very easily if you have the right tools. Online we will find multiple tutorials that will teach you how to cut through styrofoam panels uh, with just a kitchen knife or with a standard hot wire tool such as this one. The problem is that it is well suited for cutting small pieces of styrofoam or to uh, sculpt some styrofoam or to cut just some small deep of styrofoam. In this case you can cut through styrofoam no more than uh, 9 cm or 3.5 inches uh, in depth. Useful, yes. Time consuming, 
also yes. So uh, a couple of years ago I decided to build my hot wire cutting table. Uh, my hot wire cutting table is made essentially from uh, recycled materials. I can show you it uh, just right now. This is my uh, hot wire cutting table. Um, I use I use uh, some recycled uh, wood and I use a bicycle hanger I had in my cave uh, some uh, micro wire and uh, uh, of course uh, it will need electrical uh, cabling I use uh, some old uh, laptop AC adapter and uh, I bought a uh, voltage regulator online. Um, maybe I will show you a detailed video on how I made this. If you want to, just comment uh, down below this video. I also use uh, a nail shaped aluminium profile to get a stopper to get a, a ruler, a precise ruler, and I add some uh, uh, roller ball bearings in order to uh, slide the aluminium uh, profile along the, uh, the cutting board. Uh, let's start uh, uh, placing some uh, styrofoam um, panel on the structure. Let's start with the styrofoam panels. I generally start with uh, panels uh, uh, having a thickness of uh, 3 cm or 1.2 uh, inches. Mm, by the way, I'm sorry if uh, all along uh, this video I use sometimes uh, metric units without uh, uh, converting them to other units, but I'm uh, mainly used to metric units. So uh, I will assure you that if I forgot some some uh, conversion, I will uh, put them uh, on the video uh, during the editing. This side apart, let's go placing the first three panels. I start by placing them at the far end of the structure, one by one. I will add three more panels uh, on top of them, but uh, you can see that I have just only 80 centimeters of uh, um, available plywood uh, remaining and uh, that's why I've added uh, those extra brackets uh, on the back because they will support the, uh, the, the, the panels and they will support all the weight it will be added at the end on each uh, panel let's go, let's add three more panels one, two, three, okay, let's go. Three more panels. You can see that I have no space, so I need to slide the structure. Yes, let's go. Structure, okay. And I will place easily the panels. All right, one, two, and three. I need to cover the entire uh, surface of the structure, so I need to cut for the first time this year the um, styrofoam pants. Here we are. I've switched to the action camera and I hope that 
audio and video quality will be the same as with the main camera even if I doubt about it. This is the first styrofoam panel that I will cut this season. I've said before that uh, we will need uh, a width of uh, 30 centimeters or 30.5 centimeters. So let's go and uh, mark the panel from each size 30.5 centimeters. Here we are 30.5 centimeters here and from the other side also 30.5 centimeters 30.5 centimeters here they are i took my old wood ruler and i'll mark a straight line between those two points let's go it doesn't need to be precise I just need a mark to go as straight as possible when cutting the uh, styrofoam panel. Let's check out again. 30.5 cm. Yes, we are good. Now, let's uh, switch on my hot wire cutting table. Let's uh, tune up a little bit the voltage and I place the styrofoam here oops something is wrong there hope you will see it correctly then I will start pushing the panel towards the wire Let's adjust something a little bit the camera, otherwise you won't see anything. Oops, just a little error. Anyway, let's continue. It's a slow process. Fifteen twenty seconds and it will be done. Done. Go ahead. Let's remove the part we will not be using. And let's place, uh, see, there's a more about it. Voila, let's place it this way. You may have noticed that in order to have a smooth junction between those two panels, that I place the cut at edge pointing towards the outside. That's the reason why I've said previously that it wasn't so important to have a precise, a smooth cut. I also knew that in future the outer edge will be covered by something else. I knew where my project was going, so I wasn't afraid to make some mistakes. 
such as this one. And if this imperfection is bothering you, you just need to turn the panel upside down and you have less imperfections in plain sight. I just have to cut one more panel to have the first layering done. But the technique is the same. It's not so difficult. I don't want to be too long. So let's see you in a few moments. The first layer of styrofoam is in place. Next step is to add some train tracks. I know that not everybody will use a train in their project, but it is useful to know that it's now the time to lay down the tracks because the entire project will need to adapt to your tracks, not the tracks to adapt to your project. I've already made a little sketch uh, concerning the layout I intend to use this ear. Don't worry, I know that it's impossible for you to see from that distance, so I will insert a screenshot right now. I generally start by laying down all the tracks on a flat surface in order to see if the layout will fit the ideas I have for this ear project. Then, if it is all okay, I will decide where to start the climbing because I need the train to climb the project. I don't know if it will climb all over the top, like last year, because, let's be sincere, last year I made a big mistake concerning the train tracks. I made the climbing too steep, so the train had enormous difficulties to climb all over the top. So, this year I will limit the steep of the uh, climbing and make it more realistic. Last year, all over my videos, you haven't seen much of the train because uh, it was sometimes impossible to climb some of the uh, tracks. Let's lay down some train tracks. Um, I will stay on the main camera at the moment, uh, then I will insert some uh, action camera sequences in order you to get a more direct view of uh, the process, but it's not difficult, it's not technical. So let's go with some uh, train tracks. Uh, I will need my plan, I will get some track, here we go, here we go, four boxes of straight and four uh, tracks, this is the tracks, the track I use for uh, getting the, the power to the track. Um, straight, straight, straight. I will need to start uh, from this corner. I planned, uh, oops, I planned uh, to start at uh, 20, 28 centimeters from this side and 27 centimeters from this side. So, uh, let's measure 27 cm from one side and 28 cm from the other side. I will start with measuring 28 cm from this side, 28 cm, then 27 cm from this side. Okay, let's go. The first track will start from this point and the first track will be a straight track uh, let's get the same thing from the other side I need to be as straight as possible so let's say 
27 centimeters and 28 centimeters there we go that I will take my paper tape there we go I need to be I will trace the tracks along this line. I will start with some straight track. There we go. Then a second straight track. Then a uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Third, fourth, and fifth. Another one. It will be a long process. Then now I will add some action camera, uh, some action camera uh, sequence, uh, a short, uh, a short sequence, in order to let you see from my perspective what I am doing. So let's continue from my point of view for uh, just a few moments. I've started from this point, I've added one, two, three, four, and five straight tracks. One, two, three, four, and five straight tracks. I need to add one, two, three curved tracks. So let's go. I will, I don't know if you can see it. No, now it's better. I just took three curved tracks and I will join them this way and I will join the three curves to the straight curves already planned voila voila uh, As you can imagine and as you can have seen from the sketch I've laid down, the tracks will be going outside from the styrofoam panel starting from this point. Don't worry, I will add some extra styrofoam support uh, next. Uh, I just needed to know if uh, the entire laydown will suit my needs. Uh, I will continue laying down all the structure from this side and from this side. Um, at one moment I will have to decide if what to do here because uh, <laughs> I will have a, an overlap of tracks. Many, many moments later, the first laydown of the train tracks is finally done. I just need to place some track pins at certain key points of the layout in order to avoid unsolicited movements. Then it will be time for a next step that will concern resolving the problem caused by the tracks going over the edge of the styrofoam panel. But it's time to end the first video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English. And if you wish, see you next time.